Hey folks, I'm Matt Doyle. I'm OSSoccer.com's armchair analyst and welcome back for another episode of Between the Lines. Since it's 24 under 24 week here at MLSsoccer.com, we figured we would take the opportunity to look at some of the best young attackers in the league. But we have an agenda, and that's to subvert stereotypes. Throughout the years, MLS has been regarded as a physical league first and foremost. Big, strong, fast, powerful players succeed where smaller, more technical players are overlooked. It's not true, and it's especially not true now. And nobody shows that better than Darlington Nagby. Here are his strengths. First touch, balance, agility, shooting from distance, ball possession, and chance creation. Nagby is elite at all of these things. He scored some of the most memorable goals in the league over the past couple of years. But what's not really appreciated is just how tidy he is on the ball, especially in the final third. He completes 78% of his passes in that zone which means he's always getting the ball with defenders around him and still always hanging on to it. You could play him the ball pretty much anywhere. And while he might not always make the game-breaking play, he's not going to hurt you. But he still has some more polishing to do. Nagby's 38 chances created from the run of play are elite. He's in the league's top 10. It should be more, though. His teammate Diego Valeri, who's played for the Argentina national team, doesn't hesitate to compare Nagby to Falcao and Hulk, not in terms of style, but just in terms of raw ability. Almost every manager we talked to this spring listed Nagby as the one guy they really want to watch week after week after week. Simply put, he has world-class ability. The only person who doesn't seem to believe it thus far is him. The second guy we're going to take a look at is the New England Revolution's Kellen Rowe. Rowe actually leads the league in goals scored from distance this year, which tells you quite a bit about his shot. It just dips and bends in really weird ways, and goalkeepers can't get a read on it. Neither can I. Another thing to understand about Rowe is that he was pretty productive as a rookie. Three goals, five assists, some really good play in the attacking third. As a sophomore, he has seven goals and seven assists. He's improved in both major categories, and he's become a much bigger part of the Revolution scheme. That jump in production shouldn't be ignored. It says a lot about the player's mentality and willingness to work on not only his weaknesses, but his strengths. What Rowe did really well coming into the league, he does better now. So let's talk about what he does best. It's his first touch and his footwork. And yeah, a lot of guys have a really good first touch and really good footwork. What makes Rowe special though, is that he takes it north-south. When he gets on the ball, he's going towards goal, always looking to create chances either for himself or his teammates. It's spectacular because he always puts defenders on the back foot and forces them to create space. Not a lot of young players do that. Of course, this also speaks to one of his weaknesses. Because he always looks to create space, because he always looks to immediately create chances, he can be really, really sloppy on the ball. Bruce Arena once said the great thing about Clint Dempsey is that he tries stuff. Rowe tries stuff too, but he tries it in the middle third of the field. It's bad. He's got to kick this habit in order to become the type of guy that you build a team around. One guy who already has kicked that habit is Russell Tybert of the Vancouver Whitecaps. Tybert hasn't shown the north-south chance-creating ability of Nagby or Rowe yet, but what he does have is one unquestionably elite skill the ability to bend a ball in with his left foot. His right's not bad either. Tybert's also really, really solid in possession. Again, he's not a game breaker the way Rowe or Nagby can be, but when he gets on the ball, it's very, very tough to knock him off of it. And consequently, he wants the ball in the toughest spots on the pitch. He's willing to play as a true number 10 plays, taking the responsibility for his teammates when they run out of ideas. Of course, that does talk to one of his weaknesses. When they run out of ideas, he has to do more than just be an outlet for possession. He has to be an outlet for chances. We saw earlier this year when the Whitecaps were really running hot, he was creating most of their great looks. That's dried up as the league has figured him out. Now he has to figure the league out and figure out how to add more to his game and become that guy who pulls all the strings in attack for the Whitecaps and for Canada. The final guy we're going to look at today is the smartest player on this list, Real Salt Lake's Luis Gill. And you can tell he's smart because he seamlessly slotted into a veteran midfield as a starter this year. Gill's biggest strength is his reading of the game. He understands where space is now and where it will be two seconds from now. 
And because of that, he's done his best work in those long strings of possession that RSL has pretty much down to a science. When RSL have the ball and have a rhythm, Gil can pop up anywhere in those sequences. But most often this year, it's been getting on to the last pass. He understands how to get into the box from different angles, throwing the defense off, pulling it apart, and yes, finishing goals. What he needs to do more of, though, is create goals. Right now, he doesn't hit the last pass very well at all. A lot of people thought he would be the replacement for Javier Morales, that true number 10 who could take over the RSL diamond in a couple years. He's not. He's a number 8. He's more of a supporting artist than the maestro, and that's why you see him more often on the flanks of the diamond than at the point. Now, there's little reason to doubt that he has both the touch and the skill to be a number 10. He showed it with the US U-20s, but that's against kids. What he has to do to do it against adults is show he has the vision. That's the question for Luis Gill right now. Now, these are just a few of the talented, young, technical attackers in MLS. We didn't even mention Diego Fagundes or Jao Plata, or a half dozen others who we could have. Maybe we'll get to them another time on Between the Lines. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back again next week with another episode.